Hey gang, welcome back to our channel. This is gonna be our last video on this bathroom remodel. So let me show you what we did uh, since we last saw you. Uh, yesterday after we left, I, I shimmed this toilet. It was wobbling a little bit. So I, I put a shim here and then we caulked it. Looks, looks great. And then I touched up the paint where I splattered the uh, uh, PVC primer on there. So that's been done. And then behind Jordan, I put a door stop on this door down here because this knob is damaging the drywall. I like to put door stops on the door for a couple of reasons. The main one is if you put it on the baseboard and you're mopping in here or vacuuming, the door stop gets in your way and you can actually knock it off of there. But if it's on the door, it always moves. So right there under the doorknob, and that works great. Did you use a laser to uh, align it perfectly with the, with the knob? I did not. <laughs> so but that's a good question because on a hollow core door, you may not have wood, you know. Right, it might be particle in there. It's hollow, right? Yeah. So I put it towards the edge where I know I have some, some backing in there. Good thinking. Yep. And so today we're going to show you how we put in this sink. I did this one already. Woo! There's the finished product. Dang. Now let's get underneath this one, Jordan, and we'll show them what we had to do before the counters went on. Remember, we made a subtop for this thing, and then we decided we did not want that built-up edge on the quartz. So we couldn't use a subtop. So once you get under here and show them these two braces I made, I did all this before the countertop were on, countertops were on. You just couldn't see it because this was all right. taped well, Countertop was correct because there's only one. So okay. Okay. Right, right, right. And then, so those are screwed on. Again, before the, the quartz went on, I did that. And then I even had the foresight to notch this, knowing that the faucet hardware, sorry, <laughs> was gonna be about this area and I didn't want it teetering on this piece of wood. I either want it on the quartz or I want it on the wood. So we notched that out already. So let's put this faucet in. The first thing we're gonna do is install our angle stops. We've talked about these before. That's an angle stop. So I get my angle stops from a local plumbing supply house and I can ask for a half by three eighths quarter turn angle stop and that's what they bring me. If you go to the home center, they sell them as five eighths. See the diameter? Mm, yeah. The diameter of half inch copper is five eighths. So it can cause some confusion. And here's why. So that's half inch copper is five eighths OD. This is three eighths copper. It's three eighths OD. So basically tubing is based on the outside diameter and pipe is based on the nominal diameter. It's always bigger. So it causes some confusion. That's why at a home center you'll see five eighths by three eighths, but at a plumbing supply house, you can ask for half by three eighths. So let's put these on. I'm gonna go outside and turn the water off, and we're gonna remove these shark bite caps. All right, the water's off. George, why don't you go ahead and turn the tub on to take the pressure off the system. Just it on. The whole time? Yep. So these shark bite caps, I just take them off with a crescent wrench. They make a special tool. It's a little horseshoe shaped piece of plastic, but this works just fine. Watch this. See that? So all the, the jaws of the wrench are doing is pushing on this collar that releases the teeth. Right. When you say they make a, um, <laughs> a special tool, it reminds me of that grout that that asked us to use that, um, what was it called? Do you remember? Like a, 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 a it was like a scrub daddy or something? Oh or yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I think it's a scrub daddy. Or something. No, scrub yeah. daddy is what you use for dishes, I think, but oh. <laughs> that's hilarious. So we're gonna, we're gonna put this on. And then I like to use opened in wrenches. This particular valve that takes a 13 16 and a 15 16. 13 sixteenths fits on the body of the valve, and 15 sixteenths fits on that nut. 
Gives me plenty of leverage and they don't slip. Take the cold off. Oh, it's coming out of the valve. What the heck was that? The valve was open. Oh. Tighten it a little more. So the water heater's right above us. So I probably let some air in right here and the hot started coming out. Oh. Always something. Now those are snug, but they're not tight, and I'm going to show you why here in a second. Let's put this faucet in. Now this is a Kraus KVF1210BG. It's a vessel faucet for a vessel sink. They're different because they're tall, right? Because you have to get over the rim of the sink. Right. And they don't have pop-ups on them, typically for the drain. Yeah. So on that one, you just push it to close. Well, I like that look though. Yeah, it's just that this sink's full of some nasty water. You have to reach in there to open it. That's the only downside of a drain like that. Sure. So the first thing we're gonna do is remove the aerator because we wanna bleed the lines in case there's any trash in the lines. So it actually comes with this little aerator tool. This is the aerator. We're just gonna do it now so we don't forget. This is a good idea whenever you're hooking up new hard, new plumbing. Look how small those Wow. Those are, so that'll get clogged up very easily. So we're gonna just put it right there. And this is ready to go through. No plumber's putty needed. The manufacturer doesn't specify it. And there's this black compressible washer here. And that's gonna be our seal. Always mindful of when to use plumber's putty and when not to. It can stain this stuff. If the manufacturer doesn't require it, I don't put it in. Hmm. So it comes with these two washers. Plastic always goes first. And then the metal. All right, once you get a shot in here, Jordan. All right, so I threaded that ring all the way up and it doesn't have to be tight. It's just hand tight. And now when I tighten these two screws, that's what gets it tight. So why don't you get up there and get that thing, keep it square for me. You feel it pulling down? You may not. Yeah, I don't really feel it. Okay. But I know I'm doing something. <laughs> All right. Very tight. Now let's hook up the supply lines. Most people just leave the valves pointed straight up. But then look, you know, you gotta, actually that kind of works. Yeah, it kind of hides it up yeah, top. Yeah, I like that actually. You do? Mm-hmm. It like naturally bends and stays out of the way. It does. Send it. Let's see how this one does. Same thing So almost. that's actually not too bad. Yeah. So let's do that. Okay. Uh, and no pipe dope on this. This is a compression fitting and you don't need any kind of sealant. I'm gonna tighten these up before I forget. I right, we turn the water back on outside. Let's use our nice clean bucket there and purge the lines. So we're gonna come on slow. How can that be leaking? I guess that's why. You just gotta tighten it is all. If I had it tight, it's still leaking. It's all done. Now let's put it in the sink. Why don't you show them the brand and model number there, Jordan? Now it comes with this little spacer with rubber washers on each side. Now that side is flat, and this side is concave. concave. Yeah. So obviously it goes that way. Again, no sealant. And the sink goes right there. Now this sink also came with its own chrome pop-up drain, but the faucet came with the, uh, what is that? Finished. Like brushed. 
Yeah, whatever that finish is, yeah. you know, it matches. The brushed gold, I would call it. So we take the tail piece off. This is the tail piece. That's a nice tail piece. It is. And we'll take all this off. Okay, this one, this one stays. So that forms, this washer forms a seal between this flange and the glass bowl. So we're going to drop that through like that. And then on the underside, this washer goes this direction. It doesn't go that way. It goes that way, and then put the nut on it. And then you see my, I just use my channel locks to tighten that nut up. I'm able to hold this brass piece by hand. If I couldn't, I would get another pair of channel locks up high on it so I don't damage the threads. Right, the original drain and trap came straight out of the wall like that because the sink was further to my right. These sinks are over to the left and there's no way the trap would ever line up with this. So we're going to angle that drain in the direction of our, our drain on the sink. So we're gonna dry fit everything and measure for our pieces of pipe. Because this is a vessel sink, it's gonna require a 12 inch tailpiece extension. This is the tailpiece. We need an extension to reach to the P-trap. So let's put that on. Now right here between the tailpiece extension and the trap, I'm gonna change sizes. So bathroom vanities are inch and a quarter, tubular fittings, kitchen sinks are inch and a half. I don't see the point of putting an inch and a quarter P-trap. I just like using an inch and a half. That way I just have to buy one size. But at some point you have to switch between the inch and a quarter and the inch and a half. So they all come with this reducing washer. See the difference? Oh, that's cool. Yep. So I'm going to make the transition here. And then it doesn't go like that. The steel piece goes in this part where it can telescope and it gives you some adjustment. This trap is, uh, you won't find them at the home center. It's from my plumbing supply store. It's by Dearborn Brass. Really nice. And it even comes with a trap adapter. Nice. See what I'm doing? I'm just fitting everything together. Now on that side, I had to cut about, about an inch off of this tailpiece extension because this was too low. But I think I'm good there. Let's put the trap adapter on it. And then we're going to need to cut a short piece of inch and a half pipe to make up between the trap adapter and our 45. Just like that. Now I could... No, I can't. I was seeing if I could swing this so the trap's facing front to back, but I can't. I can tell that it, it wants to be right there. And you'll be able to tell also. I mean, you, you can't go in at an angle like that. You have to go straight. Right. And there's only one spot where it's going to be straight. If I try to clock it this way, you know, now I'm crooked. So let me measure. We've got all our joints primed with purple primer. And this is a DWV fitting, drain waste vent. It's not a pressure fitting. They are compatible, but they're not the same. Just as you wouldn't use this for pressure, you wouldn't use a pressure fitting for a drain. And it says on here, NSF, and right there, DWV. So let's glue all this stuff together. So there they are, all done. That's great. So I did this one early this morning, so the PVC glue is dry. This one we're gonna wait, but it's all done. Cool, dude. The only thing we have left in here, we have two things left. We have to give this a final coat. We decided to wait until everything was done because we didn't wanna mess this up when we were working inside the cabinet. So final coat. Put the doors and drawers in with their, the hardware that matches this finish. Caught the tub and we are done. 
So we're gonna see you on painting day for this. Cool. See you then. All right, guys, I know that I told you that we would come back on painting day, but I kind of jumped the gun on Jordan. I had some time, so I came over here and I knocked it out. So we weren't able to film it, right. but it came out really good. Yeah, and you saw us you saw us paint these before. So this right. is the second coat and looks great. Came out super. Yeah, it looks awesome. And uh, two coats of sealing white, two coats of this uh, sheet gray we told you about that's 50% uh, less on the uh, color. And all the base is painted. But there's something in here that's been bugging me. I couldn't sleep last night. So, you know how all these manufacturers put labels on their products with the world's strongest glue, right? It's not easy to peel off. So I got most of this off. I didn't want to scratch that tub. So we're just going to remove this adhesive with some paint thinner, also known as mineral spirits. There we go. Sweet. <laughs> that was easy. Yeah. I thought we might need some methyl ethyl ketone for that. All right, so easy. Scratch that off the list and let's go in here. And today is hardware day. We're gonna hang up the uh, towel hooks and the- Drawer pulls. Drawer pulls and the mirrors. Right, and that should be it. Yep, so let's start with the, the towel hooks. Now we, we already started this one and we did so because we wanted to remind you that we put a piece of plywood back here during the rough framing stage so that we could put this anywhere we wanted and have solid backing. Because towels are heavy. Yeah, and how many times you go in a bathroom and pull the towel off and the, the hook comes with it, right? Or it's right. loose or something. So I just have an inch and a half. What's that, a number eight sheet metal screw. That'll never come down. And then these just attach with a set screw. We've all done that before. So let's put all these up and then we'll attack the drawer pulls. And I really need a 532nd hex screwdriver so I can just get down here and mm -hmm. twist. Again, okay, we put this towel holder up first, and then when we came over here to do this one, we realized that if we go the same distance from the back wall for our bracket, then this little part, which keeps your towel from sliding off, will be pointing down. So we move this over to the left so that this part of this one and this part of this one on the same distance from the wall right here. Now let's go down here and put on these drawer pulls. So they're made to surface mount on top, just like that. If you wanted to, you could mortise this in so that this is flush. But that is so thin right there, I don't think it was worth it. Right. So we've already drilled it. We just, no, we, we've already drilled it. We simply centered it from so that this and this are the same. So this one's ready to go, right? Yep. Let's right. get them in. Cool. Nice, dude. All right, ready for these mirrors? Yeah, let's do it. All right. So here's our mirrors and here's the hardware on the back. Check this out. You take a screw out of here. So this is from the factory. Look at this keyhole slot they give you. There's no way nice. that's ever going to go in there. Good job, guys. Yeah, that's why things take forever, huh? So fortunately, we had some of these left over from this hardware because we screwed into the blocking. We didn't need the factory hardware. Right. And this actually fits in there perfectly. I think that's the way it's supposed to work out anyway for us, huh? Yep. All right. So we've got two mirrors. They have to be perfectly level. So we set up our laser. I'm gonna turn these down a little bit so we can see our laser. Is that okay? Yeah. So remember previously, we centered the vanity light over the sink with our faucet. So I'm just gonna measure from the wall to this mounting screw is 19 and an eighth. So 19 and an eighth is the center of our mirror. And we've already established that this is the line for the top of the mirror. Well, this screw, we moved it down to accommodate right. the... So the we mount. figured out where the top of our mirror wanted to be. 
Right. And, and then you measured the distance from the top of the mirror to the keyhole. Right. Which, which is, is inch and three eighths. Okay. So you went an inch and three eighths from below the top of the mirror. Right. So now that's the center line. Now let's do this. So now I need to know how far apart these are. So don't try to measure the center of this and and then this to the center of this one. Just hook your tape right there and then measure to the corresponding spot on this side. So we're wow, well, look at that. Let's just call it right in between. Just, I think 23 will work. 20 or 22 and 31 30 seconds. <laughs> yep. We'll go 11 and a half short. So 11 and a half is 23 divided by 2. Okay. So I'm going to go 11 and a half and I'm just going to go a little bit short. And these are for the keyhole slots, the nails. That's right, that's for our screws. The screws, yeah. Now let me do this one and then we'll put in those four screws. And did we put blocking back there? We did not. Mm -hmm. Because I didn't know what kind of mirror we were going right. to have. So we'll use an anchor. No problem with anchors. Yep, these. They're not too heavy. No, that's, uh, I'm going to say three or four pounds. What? What? <laughs> I think it's like six. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I always use like a five pound bag of sugar, but sugar doesn't come in five pound bags anymore, right? Right. It's four pound bags. So we got a scale in here? That's about a bag of sugar. So the anchors are fine. Yeah. And let's see, this one should be 19 and an eighth also. It is. I'm just making a little center punch for the drill because we have to be exactly on that line. Now we're assuming, of course, that the keyhole slot is the same distance from the top of the frame on all four, right? Right. So let's just check it. Okay, we'll measure to the top. It's about, it's an inch and a quarter right mm -hmm. there. Yep. Okay, and let's check the other one. All right, I'm gonna start with a small hole, just in case we hit a stud, because the last thing I want is a quarter inch hole through the sheetrock if there's a stud behind it. So we'll just try all four of them. Okay, nothing there. Okay. Nice. All right, let's get these anchors in. Change to a quarter inch bit and get these anchors in. complete with this bathroom it came out great we love it we've got towels up we've got decorations on the vanity we've got the shower curtain up it feels good to be done doesn't it It really does yeah love little quick remodels like this that's right makes a huge difference that's right so what we're actually gonna do after this video we're gonna have another one coming out that's gonna take you through the whole process before and afters the close-ups of all the details that we did the glory shots yeah so make sure you stay tuned for that it'll be cool so to make sure you're not missing out on those cool finale shots, hit that bell below and you'll get notified when we have a new video. Hit that thumbs up for us. We mm -hmm. really appreciate that. Give us a comment, ask a question. We try to answer those as best we can. And subscribe if you haven't already. We really appreciate that. Yes, sir. And we'll see you on the next project. Yes, sir.